In Western India, there is a land of smiling people, of hard toil in the fields, of strange and lovely festivals. First, at dawn, we see the farmer's wife grinding corn on a wheel of the most ancient design, while her son leads out the cattle to the fields past the great banyan tree. By now, the wife has left her milling, turns to her next task, cleaning out the cowshed. This is the daily round, the same time for each new task each day. The early morning work over, she invites the blessings of the gods on her farmhouse by chalking an auspicious design on the ground. The farmer himself takes out the bullocks to harness them. It is the season before the rainy season, the time of ploughing and sowing. Past another banyan tree, past the temple dedicated to Ganpati, past the women taking their water pots to and from the river. From the way these women wear their saris, from the style of the temple, from the banyan tree, we know we are in Maharashtra, the home of the farming and warrior race of Marathas. The wife is back cooking the morning meal. Part of the art of making it well is this patting it from hand to hand before throwing it on the warm pan. Her husband is in the fields and the food must be taken out to him. But there is not only food in those baskets, there are also farming implements. For the women, their domestic duties over, are now ready to work alongside the men in the fields. It is the dry season and the farmer is working at the well. Eight bullocks are harnessed to one of the most primitive forms of irrigation. And now, when the sun is almost overhead, a meal to restore the farmer and to prepare the wife for her change from housewife to farmhand. Nowadays, one of their most profitable fields is the field of massive cauliflowers. It is the job of the women to collect them. It is the job of the women to get them off to market. season of ploughing. The draught animals in this part of the world are always bullocks. Their slow gait and the hard soil make the work heavy. The work of sowing is easier, and the wife joins in. Now, the anxious days of watching for the monsoon rains are over. The rains have come, and the corn, their staple crop, called dwari, springs tall and fruitful out of the Maharashtrian earth. This is the corn the farmer's wife was grinding in the morning. Here, it's a far commoner food than rice. That's not a lasso, she's scaring away the crows. It is late September, harvest time, and the rains have definitely stopped. The entire family climbs onto the bullock cart to go out to the fields for the reaping. The anxious times of watching for rain, for pests, for any one of a thousand mishaps is happily past now, and henceforth it is a season of hard work and celebrations. First, the work of reaping. Mostly it is done by the women. 
The threshing is done by the women and the men. The farmer drives his bullocks round and round, plodding over the corn. Another man crouches close behind him, pushing the corn back under the bullock's hooves. The winnowing is a picturesque sight. All over Maharashtra you can see the peasants at this season of the year perched precariously on narrow trestles holding trays of corn in the wind. The harvest is in, so now to the corn ceremony of Thanksgiving. The farmer throws red kumkum, which brings good luck on the pile of corn. Then a coconut, the food of the gods, is broken and the pieces cast on the corn. And now the dedication. The women's foreheads are marked with the red kumkum. And after the ceremony, back to work to pouring the corn into sacks ready for market. It is November, an auspicious month for marriages. The bridegroom, flower-covered, rides to the ceremony on a white mare, and the guests dance with sticks in front of him. They do a fighting dance in front of him, with sticks for swords and shields held aloft. The women bring their wedding presents, silks, brocades, sweetmeats in brass trays. And by the banana plant, the bridegroom dismounts to enter the tent where the guests are assembling. The priest recites, the guests throw rice on the bride and bridegroom. Now the pair have walked there seven times round. Until this is done, the marriage is not complete, and a woman relative blesses them with rice. There is a special cast of professional dancers who do the after-marriage dance. Another after-harvest celebration is the fair. Almost as exciting as they go off on their decorated bullock carts, the wife protests, according to tradition, against taking her own husband's hand in public. But this is a holiday, and some few bold ones may be daring for once. Hundreds of years ago, these families would have looked the same, galloping their bullocks along the country road. The village where the fair is this year has put on a religious festival. The farmer buys flowers from the priest as an offering to the god. The centre of the fair is the cattle market, where some of the hardest bargaining goes on in the entire world. Every local entertainment is there. Roundabouts for the children. A physical display by the local regiment of Maratha soldiers. For these people never forget they are first and foremost a martial people. There is always a wrestling match and every member of the crowd knows every trick.
but the farmer's sport above all others is the thunderous sport of bullock cart racing. As evening comes, they gather round the troubadour, who sings in rambling verses packed with war and triumph of the most illustrious king in their history, Shivaji the Great. In Maharashtra, the farmer is always a soldier. These 20th century soldiers are dressed in khaki, but their ceremonial of departure is the same as it was in Shivaji's great days. He bends down to touch the feet of his elders always before departing. The spirit of the great Shivaji is still in these men, and this is as typical a scene in this fascinating country as the scenes in the fields, at the well, or at the wedding ceremony. And this is a typical song. Oh, you lion-hearted Marathas, never know fear, as your forefathers never knew fear. A typical song and a typical scene in the land of the plowshare and the sword.